working for Savius Aguirre Newman already for 21 years, and during her professional career, she had the chance to work in multiple fields within the real estate sector, such as market research, corporate finance, and urbanism. And today, we're going to deep dive into the fascinating topic of uh, the balance between the commercial and the technical career. And without further ado, Mrs. Rodriguez, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I have it okay. here incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Claudia that this is more difficult than uh, being in the class or even giving a conference about, I don't know, whatever market you can think about because I'm not used to talk about me. <laughs> so this is completely new also for me. Um, and, um, and I have a confession to make here, is that I never thought I was going to work in, in real estate. In fact, I started my studies as an um, industrial engineer. After three years, I turned around completely and made um, a, a change in my career and started economy. So I graduated in economy. And, um, uh, and end up, um, for, for that graduation, I needed to do a trainee. And I had the chance to do that trainee in, in well, first in the financial department of El Corte Inglés, uh, the department store, and then in Aguirre Newman. So I got to, uh, to know more about real estate. It was my first touch with that industry, um, and I liked it. Um, so when I finished my career, um, I had the chance to work for Fiat, the Italian uh, automotive um, uh, company. Um, and, and actually it was a very tough uh, decision for me because they came here uh, to Spain and they, they chose only three people among all the universities, all the graduates in engineering, economics, and businesses. So, um, but then I thought, okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to be a number in a huge company? Or do I want to be maybe someone in a very, very small company? Because at that time, Aguirre Newman was a local real estate consultancy firm. Um, and with less than 100 people working there. So unlike you, I never studied real estate. Um, and one of the reasons I didn't study real estate is that in that old times, <laughs> because I'm quite old, um, there wasn't a, a career, there was no university in Spain teaching real estate. That was something you couldn't study. Uh, th th there was no option uh, at all. So I, I never got the chance to study real estate. Um, and actually, I started in this consultancy firm in the financial department. So I didn't have any uh, contact with the real estate industry either because uh, my resp I was responsible for paying the bills of the company. Nothing to do with buildings or with investors, nothing at all. I had a pile of invoices on my desk uh, that I had to photocopy first. Then I had to register the invoices in the system. Not accounting them, just register them. And uh, I had to find the authorization, written authorization, of each of the people working in my company that, had, uh, that were responsible for that specific expense. And they, and then, pay the bills. And by pay the bills, I mean writing the checks. Because at that time, there was no... Uh, automatic electronic files. You know, I'm a dinosaur here, completely different from what we, we do now. Now I don't step in a bank. I have all my accounts here. When I started in this business, I had to write the checks one by one. And that, that was my responsibility in this company at the very beginning. And then I was 
um, about to resign because it was really boring. Imagine having a pie so fa or fa or thin voices and just doing this one day after another. Um, and I was in, at the photocopier and my, my boss, he was the financial director of the company, uh, w had a meeting. So he passed by and he said, good morning, good morning. And I was there just photocopying all my invoices because I had to take them to each of the uh, professionals in my company and had written approval uh, to be able to pay them. Um, so he came back after one hour. He said, hello, um, are you still here? Yes, I am. Okay. He went by and again had another meeting. So again, and the, the, the fourth time he, he passed by, he, he stopped. He said, what the hell are you doing here? You've been all morning here in front of the photocopy. And I said, okay, this is the process I've been told to do. And he said, is that right? And is there not other option to do this thing you are doing to pay the bills rather than spending one morning photocopying all the invoices and then get written approval, going one by one uh, to each desk asking for written approval. I said, I'm sure there is, but nobody asked me before. Um, he said, okay, I'm asking you now. So uh, if you find there's another way to do this job in a more efficient manner, please come to my office next uh, week and tell me how to do this. So I started thinking how to do my job in a, in a more efficient manner and less boring. Uh, so I did some research, I thought about the different options. I talked to the IT guys to see if they could help me uh, somehow di digitally digitalizing the process. They told me they could do it if I had the approval from the CEO uh, because those are resources that needed to be uh, deployed for that uh, process. And then I came up, I opened PowerPoint for the first time in my life and I prepared a presentation to tell my boss how to do that uh, in a more efficient manner. And he told me, okay, it's approved. And today, is the, the, that process is still working. Uh, in fact, we managed to change completely the way things were doing, not only because uh, we did it all digitally, not only because um, I talked also to the bank and there was a way of creating an electronic file and sending directly to Bank Inter. Bank Inter was a quite innovative bank uh, at that moment and there was a way to do that. So I talked to the bank and we also did it. Um, but also because uh, by doing this process, we uh, forced the whole organization to ask for prior, uh, prior approval. Before, I already had the invoices. So, okay, I did kind of a double check to see if they were all right, but the expense was done. With this new way, they had to ask permission first. So they generated a number file. So when the invoices came, we could check if, if it was okay, then we could go. So first lesson for me was no matter what position you have in the organizational chart, you have always things to bring on the table. Um, you shouldn't be afraid uh, to propose new things because we all have ideas that might be very interesting and might be um, very valuable. So that was for me the first lesson because um, I was nobody. I was the trainee, uh, but I was asked. So uh, next lesson when I grew up uh, in, in the organization was ask, ask your team ask your clients, try to ask as many questions as possible and listen to them because that way you may get new ideas uh, that can help 
uh, you be a better professional. So those were like my first uh, lessons. And uh, very soon I was proposed uh, for a change and, um, and then I started in the real business of the company. I was proposed uh, to be part of a um, department called development management. So suddenly uh, I started to be in touch with real estate. In fact, with the, um, with the most um, uh, dirty real estate because it was development. So it was land, it was construction, uh, everything. I was uh, responsible for the financial part of the projects. So I had to do the financial models, I had to do the cash flows, I had to pay the bills again, but at least I was paying the bills for those buildings that we were developing. I started to be in touch with the investors because at that time we developed an office building in Madrid with Lehman Brothers. Does it ring a bell, Lehman Brothers? Well, I'm that old. Um, we also did a full refurbishment in Castellana, Castellana 28, uh, that was with a very wealthy family here in Spain, with a family office of the Koplovich uh, family, Omega Capital. Um, I also did a development of a logistic warehouse in, in Alcala. So I started to uh, get in touch with, with real estate. And that was from year 2001 to the end of 2004. At that time, because this, this was not only consultancy and services, but it was also part of the, um, uh, it was co-investment. So the, um, the main, uh, well the main, uh, I didn't tell you, but Aguirre Newman was um, 100% Spanish real estate firm that was competing with uh, international brands such as CBRE, uh, JLL, Colliers, those that you know very well. But it was 100% uh, Spanish owned by Mr. Aguirre and Mr. Newman, Aguirre Newman, Santiago Aguirre and Stephen Newman. And, um, and it was first generation, they founded this company at the age of 35, something like that. So they were and still are actively working in the business. They go every day to the office, we get to see them. Uh, it's not like Mr. Richard Ellis, who no, nobody knows, uh, I, um, well, I guess someone knows, but uh, he, he might uh, have died many, many, many uh, decades ago. Um, so um, I, I think I lost my, uh, what I was saying. Oh yeah, the co-investment part. So this, um, this business was also linked to, um, uh, to, to a co-investment business of the founders of the company. So in 2005, they decided it was the right time uh, to stop investing in new developments. Um, I think they were pretty smart because it was 2005 when everything was enjoying the party. They thought the market was getting too hot, too expensive, so they decided to stop. Um, so uh, we changed a little bit the, the department and instead of focusing only on developments, we started to do consultancy in general terms. We call the department corporate real estate because we focus on non-real estate companies. So it was industrial companies uh, that owned industrial facilities but could uh, study a change of use. Uh, we worked with um, many, many different types of uh, companies you can imagine, uh, Renault, Swebs, uh, Real Madrid, uh, that was fun. Uh, so, uh, and with public administrations too that needed to optimize uh, their real estate portfolios. Uh, so that was the beginning of a uh, pure consultancy business because before that uh, most of consultancy firms were focused just on brokerage. 
uh, leasing and capital markets, but just brokerage. After brokerage, they created uh, property management teams and also valuation teams, but they were not focused on just giving consultancy, not being part of the transaction, but just giving consultancy. So we started that business. Um, and, and it was fun. It was fun because you had very different uh, clients uh, each time with different portfolios all across Spain. Uh, so every day was uh, a, a, a completely new day. And I guess that's why I've been working there for 21 years now because second confession, I never thought I was going to work for the, fir for the same company for 20 years. In fact, I used to look at my colleagues that had been there for maybe 12, 15 years, and I thought, they must be awkward. I mean, why are they still here? Uh, is, is it because they don't have other chances or what? I never thought I was going to be I in the same company for so long. But if I think about it, it is because I've never got the, the, um, the feeling that I was getting bored uh, because I was doing every day different things. So that business grew and grew, our teams uh, already grew, and what it started as a small department uh, became a division. Uh, not only with corporate real estate, but also with valuations, with town planning consultancy, with corporate finance, and with research. So all of those departments uh, together were part of the consultancy division. Um, and then I became um, a member of the board of directors. That was, it took me seven years <laughs> to get there from trainee to the board of directors. That was year 2007. Uh, and then, yeah, I had a lot of responsibility because of the valuations and town planning. You don't mess up with that, that kind of things. You have to be uh, very cautious of, of that responsibility. And um, three years later, I became um, an equity partner of the company. Uh, that was a really big surprise for me. Uh, Santiago Aguirre and Steven Newman told me, well, we, we would like to have lunch with you. And I was like, what for? What did I do? I, I actually thought, what did I do? Uh, I didn't think it was for good, uh, and uh, and I was amazed. I didn't I didn't expect it. There were only three uh, equity partners, directors apart from uh, Aguirre and Newman, so I I wasn't expecting this kind of. It wasn't structured. Like, okay, once you are part of the board of directors, and after three years, if your turnover is 10 million, then you get the chance to be an equity partner. It, it didn't work like that, so I, I wasn't expecting uh, that. Uh, and that was, that was a change, because suddenly you start looking not at your business, but at the company. Um, you, you, you stop being focused just on your results. Even though being part of consultancy, you never have the chance to focus just on your results because consultancy is nothing or everything, as you wish, uh, because you can touch a little bit of everything. But at that moment, your mind changes completely because now you're responsible for those in a small part, of course, but those 350 people working there. So as important as it is that your division goes well, it is that you find uh, also opportunities for the leasing logistics department or for the architectural department or for property management. The same for Madrid, Malaga, Barcelona, or Lisbon. So it changes the way you look at clients, the way you approach at clients, and, um, and you've seen, I started being a very, uh, with a very technical career. I was um, financing, I was the, the one who could do the most sophisticated financial models in the company, and 
there, there, there was no step where everything changes, but day by day, because you have contact with different clients, because you have a holistic uh, view of the sector, you start seeing opportunities uh, elsewhere. Uh, and you start connecting the dots. So it's not just what you usually do, but other things. Um, and there are several points where, now that I see it backwards, I, didn't, I wasn't conscious at that moment, but now looking backwards, I see that there were like these moments where things start to change sli slightly. One moment is when you, you are a director for the first time. So you are responsible for a team. So that's the first thing. And at the, at the very beginning, you, f you, you, you need to, to learn how to deal with a team, which is completely different. You can be a very good valuer, architect, uh, financial modeler, whatever, and you don't have a clue how to manage a team. So it is like the first big change you have to rethink uh, uh, the way you work because you're not now responsible for a team. You have to learn how to delegate. Nobody teaches you that, or at least nobody did uh, that with me. Um, and you make a lot of mistakes, uh, but um, you need to rely on your team. You need to give them the chance also to be wrong. Uh, and you, but you have to be near them so you can help them if, because they will make mistakes. But you need to give them their space. I think that's one of the things I value the most of my career in this company. I was always uh, given that space to express my opinions, to be right or be wrong, to try new models, to try new business lines. Uh, and that's the way you grow and your business grows with you. So that was like the first big change in your mind is, okay, now I have a team. Um, next change is you, you, you stop or day by day, you do less of technical work, you do less Excel, you do less PowerPoints, um, and you start to go out and see clients. You, sometimes you present work that has been done by your team, but you need to be really sure that your team is there and they've done a good job. And your job is just presenting it in a for example, in the, um, uh, to the board of directors of the Real Madrid, like a huge uh, uh, meeting room with all these people. And that's your job. And you are responsible for the work of dozens of people, architects, engineers, everything, and you're there just to present it. That's your job now. The same as now as a chief commercial officer, my job is first, understand the market, see who the players are, uh, connect with them, uh, talk about the, the market, also listen to them, understand their needs, and connect the dots. But then it is the, someone else's responsibility to uh, do the, or to, how to say, to, to, um, to develop the project. So, there's this moment also, this is like the second moment, where you feel you're losing the touch with the projects because you feel very comfortable when you are in a project, you know all the things that have to be done, but then your, your job changes a little bit, so you're not res you are now responsible for connecting the dots, but then someone else has to do the project and get uh, uh, all the attention, the presentations, and everything. And you need to focus on the next project because your job is that, is new business in the company. So, and still be uh, very close to the client so uh, 
that you know if the job has been done correctly, to get the feedback, and to create a long-term relationship with those clients. That's another uh, key point, I think. Um, and, and at that moment, you start um, changing your priorities. So uh, you start, for example, going to places uh, you never thought you were going to be. I'm, for example, now vice president of the British Chamber of Commerce in Spain. I never thought I was going to do something like that, but because I'm in a British company now and we are members of that company, um, I was asked to be part of the, uh, of the governing council and ended uh, being uh, selected as the vice president. It's not directly linked to your daily uh, work, but it is another way to expand your knowledge, your exposure, uh, and the possibility to be in touch with more people, more clients, not only direct clients, but also governments. So you need like to widen uh, your net. I think this is something that you you, you're very lucky, I have to tell you. First, because I told you, you are studying real estate, so now uh, you are focusing on, s s and, and, and you have a lot of professionals there that are willing to share not only their knowledge, but what is more valuable, their experience in this market, and they are there for you to, to share that, n that experience but you are also getting to know what will be your colleagues in the future because you will grow together in this industry. So you are generating your networking of the future with the professors, with your colleagues, with all the people you, you meet. And that's, um, uh, that's something very, very valuable. I don't remember the moment I realized that was as important as being a super Excel modeler, uh, but it is. But for me, each uh, step has its priorities. Uh, my experience, and it is just my experience, is that it was very good that I had very solid foundations uh, from the technical point of view before I started to have this public exposure. Um, and also, I think you have to know yourself very well um, and get to know what you enjoy the most. Do you enjoy being up here in a stage sharing a market presentation? Then do it. If you don't enjoy that and you prefer other type of uh, job, it is good that you find where you are, uh, your strengths, where you are strong at, and, um, and enjoy it. Uh, for me, that's really, really important. The, m the day I wake up and I discover I don't enjoy it anymore, that's the moment I will make a change for sure. Um, what else can I tell you um, about me? Uh, apart from the, the, the British Chamber, I also uh, collab, well, I, I enjoy teaching, as you may already know. I, whenever someone calls me, I always say yes. I, that's my weakness here. Uh, but I, I get to, to enjoy it a lot. Uh, I also um, collaborate with the Urban Land Institute. I don't know if you know this institution. Uh, it is a non-governmental institution that um, looks after the responsible use of the land all around the world. Uh, I'm, I'm part of the, of the governing council here in, in Spain. Uh, so we do so for Spain, uh, but I it's an incredible uh, networking of professionals all over the world uh, that are uh, focused on real estate, architects, uh, lawyers, uh, developers, um, banks. 
So all of the different actors that you need uh, in real estate are part of this organization, and there um, you can learn a lot about other international experiences. Uh, that part was also very interesting for, for me and for the developing of, of my career. Um, what else, what else can I tell you about me? Um, well, I didn't tell you, I'm a mom. I have a seven year uh, son, uh, and that's something I enjoy a lot, too. Uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the few moments that I, I'm able to be at home before he gets uh, to sleep, it's not going to be today, uh, but that's something I, I really enjoy, too. Um, well, Claudia, I'm here because of you. I'm sure you have some questions here that can help me with my next. <laughs> In wires, yes. Wires is women in real estate. It's a very new organization here in in Spain, and um, it, it is nothing such a feminist party or something like that. Anything, anything like that. But uh, it is for. Um, yeah, giving visibility to women. It is true. I, I see some women here. Uh, it, but when, when I started in this industry, not to talk about the engineering career, when, when I started engineering, I had to go upstairs to use the bathroom because there was no bathroom for women in my whole floor. Because in a class of 100 people, we were only five. Um, but in real estate, uh, it depends on the, um, uh, uh, on, the, um, on the activity. For example, in there are a lot of architects that are women, at least in, in our company, most of the directors are women. Uh, but when it gets to the capital markets and the more uh, financial side of the of the business, you find uh, less women. And I think it's just because they don't have references, uh, female references. So this WIRES organization is just to show there are women uh, that are directors in this industry uh, and to show uh, um, that it is a possibility. It, it is not a male uh, activity at all. And, and, and that's uh, our view there. Um, I think something important now that you mentioned wires, uh, both wires and Urban Land Institute have this kind of, of programs. Uh, again, in those old times when I started, there were no programs uh, of this kind, but find a mentor. Uh, I think that's really, really valuable to uh, find someone uh, who you think uh, it's a relevant person in the sector um, that you can trust and you can share your, yeah, your questions. It's not about what should I do, but sometimes there are moments in your career that you're not very sure or you, you get, maybe you have an offer from another company, you're not sure about this company, who should I ask? It is good to have someone uh, maybe 10 years older than you that can give you a clue when needed. Um, and, and I think that's another very interesting thing. It can be someone of your organization, it can be a program as we have in WIRES or in the Urban Land Institute for the young professionals. Uh, it can be a professor you meet in, in, in ECP, uh, but someone you think, okay, this person can give me guidelines in the future. I think that's really, really valuable too. Thank you very much, Mrs. Rodriguez, for first of all your time, and secondly, for speaking to our students. And now we want to make this uh, session a little bit more interactive please. and <laughs> start a Q&A. So everyone, please feel welcome to ask your questions. Hello. 
Hello, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'd like to know, you uh, have spoken a lot about your relationship with clients, and of course a company like Saúl Zahirre Newman has a, a good network of clients, but how have you had to approach new clients? How do you find new leads and new clients and bring them home somehow? Yeah, good question. Is this, is this life? Is this going to be seen by my competitors? No, I'm just joking. Um, um, okay, how, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you need to be informed. You, you need to watch new trends. You need to watch what's going on in other markets because it is easier always to copy something that goes well rather than invent a new thing. That's my, my first advice. It is really difficult to invent something new, but it is much easier if you copy, but be sure you copy the right one. Um, so where do, where do you copy? Um, I'm, I'm joking, but you have to be aware of the new trends, where the market is going. Um, Depending on the segment, if we're talking about development, uh, residential development, maybe you have to look at the UK. If we're talking about logistics, maybe it's France. So you have to look at the different trends. So it is usually the US, but you should not copy page by page what's going on in America, but w because when you bring it here to Europe, there are differences. So you need to really understand the market and try to uh, foresee what's going on. And then you just, I mean, being having a behind a, a, a brand such as Aguirre Newman and now Savills makes things easier. You just call them. Uh, you have something to tell them because you are the one who knows the local market. They have something to tell you because they know how they are growing their businesses out there. And also they want you to find them new opportunities. So it is a win-win. So you just call them and they're happy to meet you. They're happy to hear uh, about it. and. Uh, in my case, what I've noticed it works really well is if you go and visit them at their uh, places. If you travel to Paris to meet them, it works better than a conference. Or if you just wait them to come to Madrid the moment they find this is a very interesting market. If you go there, you show interest and also you are one step ahead. Because if they are coming to Madrid, they for sure will visit all the other competitors. If you go one step ahead and you go there, you are showing you are really interested in, in what they have to tell you. And also you are one step ahead because you hear firsthand and maybe one year, six months in advance. Um, and then follow up. If you just go, listen, do your notes and that's it, it doesn't work. You have to follow up, follow up, and be sure the whole organization gets to know what those requirements are and follow up, not only you, but you make sure the whole organization is following up. If they told you they want to invest in logistics, then you have to follow up with the client, but also with the logistics team. Oh. It takes time. <laughs> but yeah, it is as simple as being aware of what's going on and call, call, call. Of course, you have to have something to say. That's really important. <laughs> uh, good evening. Um, having already reached a very high level at Savile, Zaguay, and Newman, I was wondering what are your goals for the other half of your career? Do you think you, you'll want to uh, pursue at the same firm? Are you, have you ever been interested in, 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 in trying somewhere else or trying a different market or, I don't know? Uh, sure. Well, I have many times. Uh, I thought I was, I was about to change. Uh, but then I have to say I was also very lucky because in those specific moments where I wa it was clear to me that it was the moment to change, something happened, such as being offered an equity partner, things like that. I said, okay, I have to say yes, I can't go now. So let's stay for a couple of years and we'll see. Um, 
Well, I didn't tell you, but uh, one of the most um, critical moments, of course, was when uh, the, the founders decided they were going to sell the company. I didn't tell you about that. But Savills came uh, with this offer. They wanted to have a stronger position uh, in Europe, in the rest of Europe, because they are really, really strong in the UK and want to have a stronger position because of the Brexit uh, in the rest of Europe. So they came to Spain and looked at the market and thought, okay, we should buy a green human. But they also had um, uh, um, an office, well, an office in Madrid and an office in Barcelona here. So it, it was tough, of course, because at the beginning you think, okay, what's going on? Uh, then, uh, and I personally was very close to it because I was a partner, so I, I lived every step of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the deal very closely and then you think okay what's go what's going to happen with the different uh, positions because they already have people here um, what will be the strategy going forward so that was also a moment you can imagine at that moment the headhunters keep on calling because they know there's a lot of noise, so it is a very uh, good moment to fish uh, in those waters. Um, so there were many moments where, where I thought I, I was going to change, but then something happened that uh, I had like a new challenge on the table, and I thought, okay, once I solve the challenge, I'll see. Um, so I, Maybe I'm now in that moment because I solved the the challenge of integrating these two companies. Um, now we'll see. Now we'll see. <laughs> now we'll see. Um, and about other markets, um, yeah, that's some, something I've always thought I would like to do. Uh, working in, in another country. In other markets, talking about the different segments, I've already done that because in consultancy you never, I, I'm not a specialist in, in anything at all. I just have like a holistic view of the sector, uh, but I'm not the one who knows the last deal in offices in Barcelona or in residential in Malaga. Uh, I, I haven't been a specialist. Uh, I, I decided I was better at this position where I can see the things, but then someone really knows what to do. Uh, but working abroad, yeah, for sure. And still think that's something I may try in the future. Um, this goes kind of both ways. So, <laughs> I'll just move a bit more here so I can look at you. Uh, I asked Susanna to, to join us um, because I met her, I think, like three years ago. And uh, I actually had an interview with her. She was the first person at Savo Sagirinho when I worked there before uh, that I met. And I was super impressed. Uh, the smile, the attitude, the knowledge, uh, the, the multitasking that she had. She has a technical studies. But the moment I had an interview with her, she told me, wait, hold on a second. I want you to have another interview. And she had me have an interview with the healthcare team, which is then where I, where I started working. So even then, she was already having this vision in which she's connecting the dots. And I thought that was super valuable because she was at the time looking for someone. They didn't know what really, but they were having an interview with someone, which was me. Mm -hmm. And then she joined the dots and she thought that it would be I would be a better fit for this other team, which I probably was. Also because, another reason why I brought Susanna here, I don't have a technical background. I did uh, the MIM in, uh, in, in ESCP and before I had done business. So I didn't have this technical background that you, know, you start with a super financial background or I'm an architect, I didn't have that. So by going into such a specific asset class, I was already finding my knowledge. And with Susanna, we've had a lot of projects in which she had a client from other sectors that they were investing in. And they're like, ah, we have a really good healthcare team. And that's where we would po pop in with a very specific knowledge. It wasn't uh, only just a financial model or knowing how to draw a care home bedroom, but 
She had a support behind of very technical people, and she was a commercial person who had the knowledge to connect the dots and make her business happen. So I think it's super important. She's also one of the people that she was mentioning before, like mentoring. For me, Susana, because of my personality and because of her background, she's one of those people that I think I can talk to because I think she understands the way I am. And I thought it was very interesting because I have spoken to a lot of young people who are architects, for example, and they want to go on to uh, real estate. They're doing a master, or they did last year, a master in real estate. And they're trying to understand how they can get that business side when you have such a technical background, or they're super into finance, and they don't just want to do finance, but they want to apply it to real estate. So it's these kind of... Um, studies and then professional environments where you can really make things fit. And I think that Susanna is a, is a super good example of how you can have very technical studies, uh, start in a very technical career and then go on to be a fully commercial person who knows about everything, can join the dots about everything and knows exactly who to go to when they need something a lot more specific. So um, just to encourage you guys to ask any specific question, even if it's personal, not too <laughs> intimate maybe, but if it is personal, hey, uh, I did this and I'm trying to do this, what do you see? Like she's met so many people that I think she's exactly <laughs> the kind of person who you can ask uh, an opinion. She won't have the golden key, but I do think that you know, Well, she'll have... me, Claudia. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Et voilà, Susana. <laughs> You're invited. You can have whatever you want. <laughs> Already. Uh, Thank you very much, Ms. Rodriguez, for sharing your points of view and taking the time speaking with our students. And as a little sign of gratitude, we would like to give you a present. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank, you thank you very much. <laughs> Can I do a closing, a small closing? Yeah. yeah. Well, j just for a closing, um, I'm talking about the lessons I learned. Um, I would like to tell you, ask questions. Don't be afraid of being wrong. Ask as many questions as you have wherever you are studying or and working. Ask questions. You, you, you are not supposed to know the answers, so it's fine if you ask questions. So ask questions. At the same time, don't be afraid of uh, changes. It's for good. So we usually have this um, sense of uh, what, what will happen next, but don't be afraid of changes. Uh, I think it's something in this world more and more inevitable, so don't be afraid of changes. Um, don't be afraid also to share your opinions and to, to propose things, no matter what position you have in the company, your opinions and your proposals are very valuable. So be brave, but be humble at the same time. I don't know how you balance this, but be brave and be humble. And, um, and the last one for me is um, enjoy it. Uh, enjoy it, smile, and have fun, for sure. Thank you. Okay, everyone, now it's time for the buffet outside. So please go outside, grab a drink, grab something to food, and most importantly, network. Thank you. <laughs>